Okay. Uh, Elected positions. Okay. Did you see this? My Thursday lab Good evening. Yes. It's good. Yes, tonight. Uh, welcome to the January 18th meeting of the um, Charter Commission for the Concord School District. Uh, perhaps members will have noticed that our dear buddy Clint Cogswell is not here with us right now. No, he's not gone to a far off place. He's, he's safe. But anyway, we'll have to change our agenda a little bit just to get ourselves uh, what I should call illegal. I'm only going to make a couple of remarks and then turn it over to the to the, the bill and bill uh, to take care of the issue. Um, Clint has asked me in a 24-hour uh, notice if he could be uh, meeting with us remotely tonight. Uh, for those of you who know him well, he has an absolutely uh, fine reason uh, to want to uh, avoid being in crowds of any kind. Uh, and so he seems to fit all the criteria. However, what I'll do is turn it over to the guy on my right, uh, Bill uh, Ottinger, who has looked into the legalities of it, and there are, there's one thing at least we must do, and that is all agree by roll call that he has, uh, uh, that he is welcome and a legal member of our group. So, Mr. Ottinger. Thank you, and um, I can just let everyone know before he starts talking that Clint is on the phone right now with this setup. What I uh, had there with Betty, we worked with Linden and the school district team. How do they do it? We want to have our process kind of piggyback and be consistent with theirs. And so the first thing we have to do as a board is decide whether we would agree to have a meeting where one member or two members uh, would participate remotely. Um, you don't decide whether his <coughs> reason is appropriate. That's for the chair. The real question for us is, would you vote in favor of allowing a meeting where we have more than a quorum physically present of, of members where one member in this case, Clint Cogswell, is participating remotely? And that vote should be taken first. And so I would make the motion that we uh, allow remote participation at our public meeting tonight. I'll second I'll that. And we should do a roll call vote. Mm -hmm. And we need a roll call vote? We do, and we will, as part of this, it, it, we don't, we, we, we do, we should have a roll call vote. <laughs> All right. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. It, it, that's it. it was not quite yet. So everybody has agreed in this case. And Madam Chair, uh, have you determined after talking with uh, <coughs> his reason? It's just not reasonably practical for him to attend in person. It's not. It's not reasonable for him to attend in person, and I wholeheartedly support his request. Then, um, the, the Clint, hello. Uh, I, yes. I would like you to uh, identify yourself, your name, and identify any other persons in the room. Now, if you have a cuddly dog in the room, we'd <laughs> like to know that, too. Go ahead. <clears throat> Clint Cogswell, and yes, my dog's in the room, but that's it. <laughs> Very good. So, at this point, Madam Chair, the only thing we have to worry about as we go forward is when we have votes, and I think we're going to do this anyway, we have to do it by roll call. Um, Clint is participating. I've got it right in front of me, so when he wants to talk, I will hear him. And I think you guys, it's set up pretty well. So I think at this point, we are open and ready for business, ready to go through the agenda. Okay. Uh, the first item on our original agenda, and now we're ready for it on this agenda, is the discussion of presentation by Kate, Bill, and Bill about the treasurer and the clerk uh, uh, topics, items, whatever you want to call them. And so I don't know where you want to station yourselves and how you want to do it, but we it's all yours. It yeah, so, um, in simple terms, um, we've done some legal research on this. Uh, Bill was certainly more aware of it because of his participation the last time around. Let me take this off for purposes of talking. Um, and I don't recommend wearing hearing aids when you're wearing a mask. It's a little <laughs> bit complicated. Um, in any event, Bill had done a lot of the research on that, and now I've taken a pretty hard look at the statute in 
particular RSA 671. Um, I don't think the statute applies to this school district for a number of reasons. Um, and in our kind, Bill and, and Kate and I have had some conversations about it. Um, what essentially we'd like this commission to decide is whether you think this fight is worth the battle. And um, if it is, our proposal is that um, Bill, Kate, and I have a preliminary conversation with the Attorney General's office about our view of the statute, why we think it doesn't apply this requirement that you elect the clerk and the treasurer is part of our say 671.6. If the statute doesn't apply to Concord, then we're not obligated to follow that procedure. Um, but so the thought is we'll have an initial conversation with the Attorney General's office to see how they feel about it. Eventually, if it's decided that this is a proposal we want to make uh, to the voters as part of the, the uh, amend an amendment to the Charter Commission, then we'll need the opinion of a New Hampshire attorney on that. Um, I've had a conversation with, with an attorney, Bill has had one, um, and at some point we'll come back to you with a recommendation as to who, as to who we might recommend for that attorney. Um, but for the purposes of tonight's conversation, this is simply to say that um, if the commission is so inclined, uh, we think at least the initial conversation with the Attorney General's office is appropriate because if we get too far down that road, and we're going to road it, run into a roadblock with the Attorney General or the Secretary of State, we should know that in advance because otherwise we may be in a situation where we'll just have to seek legislation on the issue if we want to go there. Questions? Uh, I have one question. Um, if we agree that uh, we <coughs> forewarned is forearmed, so to speak, um, if we as a commission agree then can we change the motion tonight to read just a little differently that will help move you a little further down the road? I want to change the motion as much as you want to, but um, yeah. I guess I, I guess um, I'd be interested in knowing, Betty, what you're right. I think the, the motions for tonight are just the question of whether yeah, this is okay. an issue we want to keep on our yeah. plate. Okay. Right? Well, then, then I have another solution that would answer my own question. Uh, if we do the motion as it's written, and take care of it there. And then when we get to the part after community input where we have time before housekeeping, could we all choose to address that issue to move it further down the road? In other words, do it in two steps? Well, I, I actually think right now, as this has been presented by Bill, and I have nothing to add to it, it was yeah. very good. I think it would be appropriate to consider a motion to authorize the proposal that Bill made, which is to have Bill, Kate, and I yep. organize on behalf, in our capacity as members of the commission, uh, a meeting with the Attorney General's office to explore this question and come back to report to this commission what we learned from that meeting. And at that point, the commission is in control of what it wants to do. Right. Yeah, I, I only disagree with you in one respect, Bill. It might be putting the cart before the horse a little bit. The first question that we have yeah. motion do we want to go any further with this at all? Very good. No, no, I know. So I realize if we, if the, it has to be in the, sequence. If the commission said, no, we're not interested in going further, then yeah. we don't need to go to Very the good. Yep. Yeah. So okay. we can but, defer that motion. Yeah, to, actually, you could put that motion. First of all, I don't think we need a formal commission motion because once these have been adopted to put them in place. I'm sorry, can you pause for the I, I, I'm hearing something here. Oh, it's me. Yeah. This is squeaking. Yeah. Okay. Now I can't hear anything. Right. All right. Hold on one second. Okay. We'll wait a little bit. We're on pause. Yes. On pause. Clint, we're just waiting a little bit, just clearing up a um, feedback situation. Yeah. Yes. This is a Perfect. good thing to do. Perfect. I, I, would, I would note parenthetically, too, so that people know. Yeah, I was having a lot of static. Is it, my, is it that? It might be getting some sort of like um, feedback trouble from the microphone. I'm not sure. I'm not hearing you yet. Nobody's talking. <laughs> you want to talk? 
Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Testing. Testing. Kate Vaughn. <laughs> Testing. Okay, okay. I won't say. Yeah, it's getting there. You can sing it, Canto, for us. That's okay. I, I oh, can, my God. I can, I can I live love through that. it. <laughs> if it's not bothering other people. Okay. Thank Don't you, man. Don't talk about. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, so we're, we're good. We're good, right? Very good. Okay. Um, you know, parenthetically, maybe not exactly the right time to bring it up, but if RSA 671 applies to the district, then we are limited in the number mm -hmm. of people that we can have on the school board because the statute limits school boards to three, five, seven, or nine people. So without an if, if in fact the district is subject to the statute, we would need legislation to go beyond nine. Okay. Thank you very much. Oops, I'm falling apart. Um, well, we're ready for community input. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet if you would uh, like to use it. And uh, we'd be delighted to hear your opinions and feelings and uh, situations of any kind. Who's first? Mr. Richards, welcome. I don't usually get to sit at this chair. <laughs> it's humbling, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> Good evening. First of all, I'd like to uh, thank the Commission for another opportunity to sit before you. I come here tonight to answer Mr. Croto's question to me two meetings ago. I was hoping to come to the last meeting, but I was feeling a little bit under the weather with what is now a, considered just a boring bronchitis, so nothing other than that. But two meetings ago, Mr. Croto asked me if I would go back and speak to the, uh, to the other members of the board task with regards to the question of the number of members that we have on the board. I was able to talk to and get a response, or actually six out of the ten people, because we have one new board member who I also asked. Um, I asked them those questions and they responded and every one of them said they did not want an expanded board. The reasons that they gave me were that they felt it would be very cumbersome. They thought that adding additional board members would make our monthly board meeting even longer than it is now as we wade in on different uh, for each individual to speak and um, and they didn't think that it would improve the efficiency so um, I just wanted to share that with you I promised you that I would I do want to thank you for all of your hard work since I am sitting here I will uh, once again um, reiterate my uh, request that you can that the board remain fiscally autonomous um, that we remain able to issue bonds um, in the past uh, and in the actually I can only really speak to the eight and a half years that I've been on the board um, each and every one of those boards took that responsibility very very seriously everyone was always extremely concerned about the financial impacts to the individual taxpayer on each of those decisions that we made. But the ability to move quickly and to take advantage of financial situations, especially in areas of being able to bond and to start projects, saved this district hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I think that was key um, and, and as a business person, you know you want to be nimble and be able to react to situations. So I will state that once, once again. And um, I once again just want to say thank you for all the work you've done. And I appreciate the time that you've given me today. Can if I, you, I you, you always may. I'm, I'm, as, as a board member, I'm used to lots of questions. Seven committees. 
Mm -hmm. um, my experience of having served on the board for 11 years is that, and I will say that serving on the board in the 80s was very different from serving on the board in what you might call the aughts because mm -hmm. a much bigger budget and a lot more challenging issues. But while there are seven committees and nine board members, my experience was that some of those boards, some of those committees are not terribly active on a regular basis. For example, in negotiations, you're only really involved when negotiations are ongoing with one or the other um, groups. Um, this, uh, and same is true of the budget committee. Very active at certain times of the year, not so active at others. I just wondered if, if you comment on whether the situation has changed sufficiently so that the committee work is effectively overwhelming the nine members. Um, I'd be happy to comment on that. Um, I speak just as a single board member. I don't, I don't have the authority to speak for the board, but I'll tell you my personal experience. Um, I think, uh, Mr. Glan, you're exactly right. Um, things, there are times, but it's, I can't single out a particular committee. There are times when the Capital Facilities Committee, there are years where the major project that we did was summer projects of painting and reflooring and really throughout the rest of the year there were just limited projects sidewalks and drains here and there this year as you know it is a very popular popular year for the capital facilities committee you are correct in the fact that negotiations depending on the uh, the flow of the three-year contracts which most of them are uh, some years are are really very quiet and we only meet maybe twice the other thing I'll point out and it's something that's actually changed a little bit gotten even more so in my time is that you will find that board members that are not even on the committee frequently attend the meetings they are a unique group of people who, <laughs> who clearly take and dedicate their time to where they're so interested in getting as many facts as they can that they come to meetings that they don't even have to and it's just the nature of of the people that we have on the board and i would say on numerous boards on the boards from five years ago are not that different than the boards now is that the the, the folks know what they're getting into when they get on to run for the school board and they have a tendency to show up for more meetings than they need so I don't know if expanding the um, the, the numbers of, of members on the board would really change that very much. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. Does anyone else have any other questions? Well, then once again, thank you very much for your time. Thank, thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Thanks. Thanks. <coughs> Ms. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to be well again. Um, oh, it, if I could, with Clint participating remotely, if you would please state your name oh, sure. uh, for, for, for the... Internet. Absolutely. So I'm Gina Cannon. I'm one of the board members um, from... Oh, God, I think I, I, I moved. I'm in District C, but I think I went from Ward 9 to Ward 10. So... You did. Um, so... I wanted to address um, both the, the number of board members. You know, I think I think one of the issues is nine is is we are nine really, really committed, passionate board members. But sometimes we're like herding cats. And I think if we were to expand the number that we have, we are going to exponentially uh, increase the effort of trying to herd those cats. Um, I, I don't think, I, I agree with Jim, and, and I can just speak for myself. I, obviously, I don't have the whole board imprimatur, but people know kind of what they're getting into when they, when they sign up for committees, and, and 
what they want to do. I mean, sometimes things are, are more busy than others. Um, certainly the, the finance committee, I think kind of sits back a little bit while the whole board does the budget because everything's laid <coughs> out, but then they step forward and <coughs> particularly these last couple of, of years with the ESSER grants and keeping on top of all of that. Um, capital facilities again it ebbs and flows depending on what the what the projects are and I will say that and and Chairman Richards correct me if I'm wrong I think everybody wanted to be on capital facilities despite <laughs> the heavy lift that it is right now it's an enormous lift but everybody wanted to pitch in and help um, I don't think having nine people on a committee is uh, is, is particularly efficient um, but the other piece that I really <coughs> wanted to weigh in was to ask the commission to not consider electing all of us in one election. The potential for the loss of corporate knowledge of how things work. For example, we just had a, a meeting of the negotiations committee where the explanation behind the entire salary structure and steps and, and colas and benefits and, I think that may have been a four hour meeting to explain to us how those contracts work. Now we don't have to do that every year, but if, if we had everybody potentially, uh, granted not everyone will be elected out, I hope, but the potential for having nine people on the board who are all brand new um, is frankly terrifying. Um, my first year, I was just floored with how much I thought, incorrectly, that I knew, and how much I didn't know, and how much I had to learn, and, and how much I had to juggle, and how much it was all interconnected, and it's, it, it takes some time to really get that, and I'm not even sure after two years I get it all. I get a larger chunk, but I'm not sure I get it after two. To have everybody come in all at once, when, when nobody has that, I think would be disastrous to our school board. So that was, I, I, I read that in the motion and I was like, uh oh, <laughs> that, that I think is a real problem. Does anyone have anything they wanna ask or? I'd like to ask you one other question a little bit different from the one I asked um, Mr. Richards, which is some comments have been made that we should consider increasing the salary of school board members. Oh, right. um, and um, I don't think I even knew the school board members got paid when I ran for the school board <laughs> the first time. But um, one perspective I heard was that, it, that it's often difficult for young, particularly young mothers, to run for the school board because to come to meetings they have to get um, daycare. And, um, or you know, someone to care for the children. So, if you have a comment on that, could you provide it? Well, I not will. so much the young mothers, but yeah. just the issue of. You know, I'm, I'm not so young anymore, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, but I, I do do have a special kid. needs kid at home. So when I come to the meeting, her dad needs to be there, um, or or I can't can't come. But I, I don't think that people get into it for the money. Um, I think it's 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 kind of a nice thank you, but it it should not be confused with compensation for the amount of time that's that's put in. <laughs> um, it, 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 it's just not. Um, and I don't know. I guess I think that the people who run for the board are, for the most part, volunteers. Um, and. I think I'm okay with that, personally. Um, you know, I just, I think we sh I, I don't know that we should be more employees of the school district than we are. Can I ask a question? Um, we already heard this from Jim Richards when he met with us the first time, but what is your thought on um, the current system of having the, the three districts members from each district and then the at-large members of the board versus fully at-large? <coughs> well, I guess I, I kind of like the
the ward system because it makes sure that each area of Concord, and there really are different areas of Concord, that each area of Concord has some representation. I mean, I know that my sense, I can't, again, I can't speak for other members of the board. Once I got elected, I represent everybody. I don't just represent my people of of my ward or my district. I represent everybody. Um, but I, I like that they're spread out, um, that, that there are people that have, that, that if there are concerns in the various neighborhoods, there are people that those neighbors feel comfortable going to. I, I kind of like it. Thank you. And what do you think is a good proportion between at-large and uh, district court. If you uh, oh. are in favor of nine members, then how would you split that up? Well, I would, I, I, I'd at least have one from East, each district. I, I like the current system of two, um, with the at-large being at-large, but I think you could uh, solve the the concern that I have of each neighborhood basically <coughs> being represented if you at, had at least one well I sort of think of it in terms of diversity we hear so much about diversity now and worry about people who are underrepresented um, and so there is a good argument for uh, ward voting the only question is in what proportions mm. yeah, okay no no I just wanted to yeah Gina thank you for being here uh, well before you jump in Tom thank you all for being here <laughs> I really well you're welcome Go ahead, Tom. so you can't speak for everybody on the board I understand that but you can certainly speak to experience and you were you've been on the board two years you kind of watched it as I remember a few meetings before um, the election process so you've got some idea of experience in those experiences have you ever um, found that there is one particular board member who seems to be favoring their one school in other words it, it, the opposite of what we're talking about here in fair representation to all um, has you have you ever experienced that that feeling that uh, there's a disproportionate amount of attention being given to one board member because of their affiliation to their particular ward or area I don't think so Tom I mean I I personally I get calls from people across the, the city and and I can only assume that that other board members do too I mean I don't only just hear from my constituents for want of a better term from my from my district I, I get calls from all sorts of different members of the community, from from different neighborhoods, um, I, I think I think sometimes, and, and particularly in light of how emotional some of the decisions have been recently, that it is challenging to remain open to hearing all perspectives not necessarily just your neighborhood perspective um, so thank you thank you one comment i want to thank you for coming uh in the evening like this uh it's very helpful to get your input i think the point you made about whether you are elected from a ward district or an at-large district is not relevant to your fiduciary duty once you're a member of the board. Your duty is to the entire school district and all families, all stakeholders across the whole district. I think there was um, serving on the commission 10 years ago when we considered that, which I did, there was a little bit of misunderstanding about that, that people were thinking when you're elected from a particular ward, your job is to represent just that war. Uh, I think the way you expressed it was very uh, clear and very helpful to the citizens of Concord who would potentially listen to this to understand that when they elect someone, even if it's a ward versus an at-large, they're electing someone to serve the entire district 
And that's the duty of that person once they're a member of the school board. Mm -hmm. And that was the intent, certainly, uh, 10 years ago. So thank you for making that so clear. Absolutely. Any other questions? Oh, well, thank you. I know you're going to be out again tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank Maybe you. I will too. There you go. Come on ahead. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Fumbra, thank you Gina. for taking on this challenge. Um, and, and thank you for having me speak. Thank you very much. Charlie, you're New York. Yep. Mr. Russell, you know, he's been here before. Mm -hmm. In fact, he was our first public uh, speaker way back at the very first meeting. Isn't that right, sir? Uh, yeah, Charles Russell. Um, <laughs> I wear many hats. I think citizen activist is probably the most appropriate. It's nice to hear from people that think the board is the right size and they're being paid enough and everything else. So I won't touch those issues. They know better than I, certainly. Um, looking at the motions, uh, just some background. Uh, numbers three and four, the autonomy, autonomy question and the bond approval question. Um, I ran for office in the 80s and, and for city council twice, unsuccessful, ran for con con, ran for city, uh, ran for county attorney and lost four times and then promptly moved up to management and helped other people get elected. But I followed city government and to a lesser degree the school board and that autonomy question has always kicked around. It was more prominent back when the city manager, Jim Smith, was here and then I was involved in getting the charter change uh, that indirectly led to a popularly elected mayor now um, on the uh, so I see no sentiment I, I'm kind of a magnet for those type of things if somebody's out there and I haven't heard anything I've spoken with members of the City Council pretty longtime members and they don't particularly want the job <laughs> they say thank, <laughs> thank you we got enough problems so yeah, uh, maybe that true. one that's number three number four uh, came up um, as a result of a bill uh, s s that kind of came out of the opposition to the school con consolidation from 08 to like 010 or 011 and that led to a vote that created the Charter Commission and so I have again hear nothing about that going on and I'm not sure the, as a maybe a pulse of the public to some extent I hear much about it. Um, issue 12 uh, I guess I'd say um, I did come across uh, <coughs> at the Secretary of State uh, 6716 that talks about the size of the uh, school boards, but I would note that Manchester has 12, has 14 on their school board, so if you have your own charter, it may not apply. But uh, uh, Mr. Richards and Gina Cannon certainly have more in input on that than I do on that. Number 12, I would suggest you would consider the current mix. I put out 800 words in the monitor. Obviously, I had an impact drawing all these people in to speak tonight. Uh, so take my words for what they're worth. It didn't help that they got the wrong date in your in Yeah. Your yeah, well, I know. I thought the meeting was last week. But we'll see what we can do to get some more people in here. But I would say number 12, we ought to keep it the same way. Um, there was a push, and if you saw that article from the uh, from the Boston Globe on Lowell, a lot of the arguments really apply here. We have more diversity than we had in the past. Uh, we have a district on the Heights. Uh, we've elected uh, a state rep that is not your uh, longtime resident, traditional, someone from that's come to Concord. And I think that's an issue that's going to be faced down the road. So I would say number 12 would kind of override uh, numbers 10 and 11. Um, number 15 is the school board stipend question. Um, the way that's written, it's tied into the city council. And it would seem to me that the school board is independent and should not be tied into what some other place does. If all of a sudden the city council decides they're going to put themselves at 10 grand, boom, all of a sudden the school board is at 10 grand. So I think you want to split that out. But I also don't think you need to put in what people, what it, it should be independent, decided by the school board. In some places I've seen, they'll say three months before the election, you can decide what the next salary is going to be or stipend is going to be for the following year 
although if you have a holdover that might create some some problems but it seems to me you you want to untie that from the city council um, number 16 um, I have a copy of and I'll pass it over to chair Hobie. Um it is a uh, city ordinance that was passed in 2009 that basically has reporting it has some definitions I think that ordinance can be marked up pretty easily by some of the um, scribes or attorneys on the board or people that have done it and and make it there um, the monitor I believe on December 26th had an article about there are conservative as well as liberal groups out there are going to start actively recruiting people to run and who <coughs> 10 years ago would have ever thought what has gone on uh, nationally uh, with Citizens United and all these other things so I think you need a reporting uh, uh, statute um, one big word I've heard an awful lot recently is transparency you want to know who's putting the money whose money is behind this if uh, I'm told there are no longer Cox Brothers, one of them has died, but still outside money could come in. Um, an article on, I think it was December 26th in the Monitor, talked about Fran Wendelby, who's a conservative up north, is actually going out and they're trying to take over school boards and train candidates. I would expect that PTAs, I would expect that the union and other groups will be actively recruiting people to run for office and make it much more competitive. And that's where I mentioned last time about if you have it large, then you can run a candidate and take over a council or take over a board by dumping a lot of money into a slate of candidates. Whereas if it's by district, it may be more difficult and it's kind of a hedge. Um, number uh, 16. And then um, the tenure uh, on the, uh, the miscellaneous questions. Um, uh, yeah, 18, um, future charter commission. I think if you continue to have that coming up every 10 years, then you take away the press for somebody to say, gee, uh, we want to amend the charter, we want to revise the charter. And, and CONCON used to be that way in the state government until 84, and then they did away with that. We don't have it every 10 years. So I think it takes away the pressure of people to say, well, I don't like what's going on. Let's do an amendment. Gee, it's an awful lot of work. Why don't we try to bring it up at the next Charter Commission? So I think that should continue to go on. Um, and then number 20, I look at the, the Charter. Charlie, can I just stop for a minute? I'm sorry. I got a little confused in there. So you're recommending that we continue 10-year Charter Commissions or? Yes, every 10 years. Can make it permanent and you know do some of the cleanup work there um, and number 20 I look at the charter and you, uh, there's an awful lot of pages number 19 is it 19 pages uh, 5 to 7 and then 9 to 13 out of your 6 or 7 of your pages all have to do with um, mm -hmm. either amendment or revision mm -hmm. And it seems to me that some of the more capable drafters out there could consolidate those in and maybe merge them in, but um, it seems to me an awful lot of paper and words that you could do them together. So um, number 22 on Pentecook, um, I'm not sure that this commission could do much on that. I guess I would suggest it may not just be Pentecook, it might be combination of Concord with Pentecook and or other surrounding towns. I mean, when we have dropping enrollments, although I, I still think we're on the down cycle uh, and we're gonna come back up, um, that there's, there's um, economies of scale by consolidation. I mean, there's schools up in Pentecook in the Merrimack Valley District. I hear passing rumors about Loudon and another town may want to go their own way and whether they're going to be tuition students or what I don't know but so anyway that's all I have to say I'm sorry to take so long and um, I did put in um, some things I don't know if how you all saw them but the school board elections are much more competitive than City Council um, City Council in 35 years I've heard four incumbents have lost 
in the last 10 years, four incumbents have lost on the school board. So it's much more competitive, and I think with uh, Fran Wendelby and unions and others, you're going to have uh, a lot more competition. So, and I think uh, the district level um, in business, I guess it's called entry level requirements that running, I ran city wide twice, didn't have much of a committee and ran against Hager, Washburn and McDonald and guess what, I didn't win. Surprise, surprise, took me a couple of losses to figure that out. <laughs> but I'm just saying somebody wants to run up on the heights. Jim, I guess, ran in a, in a Ward A and he's done well from there, more than well. And so, but it's a big city and you know, you gotta raise money. And whether it's on the internet or in the newspaper or uh, radio, TV ads, who knows where it's going. So I, I really think from the democratic perspective, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Doesn't mean you can't tweak it, but I think the, the ABC districts were the, one of the main changes that people sought back in 2011, and you ought to keep that. Um, I guess we don't want to increase the size because we got work horses on the school board. God bless them. God bless all of you that serve. Um, and I guess that's all I have to say. Any questions? Yeah, I have a question to you. Mm -hmm. Do you realize that the members of the commission had financial um, um, disclosures uh, before our election and during our election? Um, I didn't go looking at them, but it's nice to know that that, that was there. Oh, yeah, I, I spent $3. <laughs> 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 um, well, I bought six big poster cards. I, I, well, the, the frugal Yankee is epitomized. <laughs> Thank you. And, and apparently that's why we only pay them 1000 a year on the school board. So, well, I, I, I mean, at some point I really think, I think I said my first meeting, was you really need to look at what some of these other school districts are doing. And, you know, as much as you say, great, but, but you know, whether it's 1000 2000 or 5000 you know, I'm not going to run. I'll tell you that. I'm not looking for the, 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 the headaches and the problems. I'd like to give the ideas, and I appreciate you're all serving, as the others have said. So, And, Charlie, if I might just say thank you for the work you're doing and the uh, uh, taking the time to write a piece well, that's oh, the kind of citizen yeah. involvement that is, is well, very helpful and you're trying to get involvement in the public and you deserve a great deal of credit for that Thank well I, 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 it's always amazed me um, I ran for the city charter commission in 90 and there were like 25 that ran I think I come in 10th or 11th nine were elected and no one ever showed up and it was like you know if you cared enough to run for the office you must have had some ideas and you know you don't have to put your tail between your legs and not to I'm sure everybody's life is different than mine and may not have the time to do it but you know um, there are people out there that care and um, it's kind of tough to get into the website and get things filed it could be a little easier but we're working on it okay glad to hear that thank you, uh, thank you. But before you go. I was. I wrote you a note after your article in the paper, and I thank you for bringing interest and uh, information to the group. And I, I have to say that the Concord Monitor and you have been our best champion for PR, mm -hmm. because seriously, as as hard as we try to get this information out there, it really takes something like the two things I cited uh, to get people excited. Uh, my classic is this. I uh, was going into the grocery store before Christmas, and the person tending the Salvation Army bucket said, so, Mrs. Holdley, how are you? And I said, I'm fine, how are you doing? And he said, so, how's the Charter Commission coming? Well, I'll tell you, that's the last place I thought I would have an answer or a question like that. And so, uh, we are having more interest. It, it may be interest at home with people afraid to come out or whatever, um, but we try to set up ways to get in touch with us. And as you know, you know my email. I don't know your phone number yet, though, and I need it. Okay? Thank you very much. I'm not going to broadcast it here. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect you to. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks, Charlie. Thank you. <coughs> well, that's exactly what we want to have. We want to hear people. We want to know people who are errant. Question? 
Nope. No, no, I was just pointing to the clock to let you know. We gotta go. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's move. Okay, well, I'm coming up my agenda. Let's go back to it. Well, next on the agenda is mm -hmm. um, discussion of the list of motions. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, you've been informed a couple of different ways, a couple of different times about the 22 motions. Uh, I will give full credit to uh, Lyndon and to Bill Ottinger for having the idea of the value of this, I'll call it exercise or activity. Uh, we'll give further credit to Bill for having organized them in the way that they have. And I find it somewhat trauma-like that there are 22 motions in the year 2022. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, <laughs> the only other thing I would like to mention is that I can remember being in the legislature, and sometimes they'd have uh, questions that had so many knots in them, N-O-T, that I couldn't figure out whether we were in the negative or the affirmative or the negative or the affirmative. But I'll just remind you that these are uh, worded such to say, motion to recommend further work. Further work means group discussion, mm -hmm. okay? And, and there could be a myriad of reasons why you would want further work on something. Now, then we turn to if you have a nail on not to have further instructions and gen excuse me, discussions, then that could be one of a couple things. Number one, it could be that you think that this is not appropriate or reasonable or sensible, and therefore it, we shouldn't I shouldn't use the words waste our time, but we shouldn't uh, spend time on that when we have the other issues that are bigger. Or it could be that you think that the <coughs> charter, as it is written, does not need to be addressed. So there are two very different kinds of reasons why you would vote nay on these motions and only for really one uh, reason for voting aye. So with that small uh, reminder uh, and also uh, I can't tell you how excited I am for us to get these done because I think that it's going to give us so much information and it'll give us a plan for our work as we go on it'll give a record of how people voted on these particular issues and except in some cases the uh, reading between the lines will probably be, be correct but sometimes it won't be so with that said uh, do we move to you or the other bill? I think what you could do is I could make each motion, see if there's a second, yep. and we have any discussion on each one. If as soon as that's done, do a roll call vote. And and I agree with you, Betty. We will then have a record mm -hmm. that's clear for the future. If there's any other charter <coughs> commissions of how we address every issue that I think reasonably we've heard. Okay. So far. And, and just one other reminder, uh, the discussion that you just, you just used the word discussion, is not the major discussion, it's no. about the status the of the motion. Because we have okay. to pray. Yeah. And, and so in each case, just to move it along, I'm going to read the motion quickly. I'm making the motion as if it is to recommend further work. It's going to get seconded. It's highly likely, and in fact in most cases, I want you to know, I will vote no, having considered this on most of my motions, but I'm going to make it in order to get this record going. <laughs> so it, without further ado, <coughs> I don't yeah. further, ado, further ado. So let me just suggest that while I suspect we're going to have pretty good agreement on all of these, from my perspective, if, if four members of this commission, or even three, Oh, vote yeah. that they want to continue discussions exactly. on it. And we I do feel it. like we should go yeah. forward. Right. Oh, that, yeah. 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 That's it, very good. It's point. not, um, we don't need unanimity on that. Yep. Gina has a question in the back. The, the idea oh. that had bandied about was uh, generally uh, a quorum. Uh, we'll, we'll do it five of the nine, we'll do it. But Bill brought up an important point in an email to me. He said, Does that mean that the other pile isn't? excuse my words, a dead pile. No, it is not right. a dead pile. If there is sufficient interest among the members, three or four people who uh, disagree right. with the others, then let's, get, let's address all of them. 
I view this like a cert petition, Bill. The Supreme Court says they only need four votes to take a case as opposed yeah. to five to decide it. So. You're, yeah. you're <laughs> right. And this is about prioritizing our work because April is coming so fast that if we don't prioritize yeah. and make decisions of what we're going to focus on, we won't get to the preliminary report. There's a question now. Oh, I'm sorry. Gina, can I just ask people to try and speak into their mic? Yes. Yes. I will do sorry. that. <coughs> There for a reason. I was just helping with that. Can you? Could you come up and sit there and hear better? Um, well, I don't really want to sit at the table, but I can, I can move. We'll, we'll, speak, I can we'll move. speak loudly. And so, so, yeah, Bill, oh, if you I'm want, so I'll sorry. I thought of that before. Okay. So the two bills are going to work together to get these on the floor. Are we ready, <laughs> Madam Chair? We are ready. First motion in the list motion to recommend further work on a charter amendment to authorize the duly elected Concord School Board School Board to appoint the treasurer of the Concord School District. Um, this is called the appointed treasurer question. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? I'll start first by saying uh, I support the way Bill described it earlier. I think this is an important issue for the city of Concord, so I intend to vote yes on this. Uh, that score sheet bill line is set up alphabetically, okay. but you can call it any way you want. So, Bill? Uh, yes. Clint? Yes. Tom? Yes. I vote yes. Betty? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Tracy? Yes. Kate? Yes. Eric? Yes. The second motion, motion to recommend further work on a charter amendment to authorize the duly elected Concord School Board to appoint the <coughs> clerk or secretary of the Concord School District. The appointed clerk question. Is there a second? Second. Second. And I'm ready to vote nope. if there's any, any other discussion. For point. the same reasons so you gave before. I would, I would vote yes on this. Clint? Yes. Um, Tom? Yes. I vote yes. Betty? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Tracy? Yes. Kate? Yes. Eric? Yes. Uh, the fiscal autonomy motions, and the first one is really the, the key starting one, the overarching one. Motion to recommend further work on a charter amendment to alter the status of the current governmental and financial autonomy of the Concord School District. Um, is there a second? Yes. Uh, Betty, I'm just going to second everything. Oh, so okay. <laughs> Fine. You <laughs> need the Makes it much easier. Makes the minutes better. <laughs> Discussion? I would just start by saying uh, this is very important to me. The independence of the Concord School District has achieved the benefits that the chairman of the school board has said, and I've seen it for the 30 years that I've lived here. So I intend, uh, when we call the vote, to vote uh, no on this. And I just add to Bill's comment that this is an issue on which I expected we would hear more. Yeah. Um, and I think the fact that we haven't heard anything, and in addition that the city council wants to take this on, um, <laughs> like they like they want a pain in the neck. Um, so I, I, I'm going to vote no on it too. I, I felt very strongly yeah. about this for a long time. I think it's what makes our school district unique. <coughs> and I need to fill the lily further. I too am very surprised that there has not been more murmuring in the hinterlands. Uh, I talked to a lot of people and no one has any problem with it. So uh, in the words of Charlie, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, I, I, I just hope that it's indicative of the fact that people are satisfied with the work of the school board. Yes. And uh, unless there's a, a, a huge uprising at some point or another, um, we should keep it status quo. Mm -hmm. So, Lyndon, for your purposes, I'm going to vote. I'm going to fill out this sheet with X's where people have voted no and check marks where people have voted yes. Bill? No. Clint? Uh, I just want to add for a second if we know we're not going to uh, work on one, let's not second it and save us the votes. But no, anyway. That's fine, too. That's a good That's idea. Fine too. Okay. I actually, on the other hand, I, I feel like 
a seconder for the purposes of discussion. Right. Yeah. And a yeah. public record of how people yep. voted on these issues. I think we need to. Is is that, that, that's true. So my recommendation would be stick with the seconds and the vote. Agreed. Clint, in light of that, how do you vote? <laughs> <laughs> no. Tom? No. I vote no. Betty? No. Nancy? No. Tracy? No. Kate? No. Tara? No. Continuing to number four, motion to recommend, this is a relative of the one right. we just proposed. <laughs> motion to recommend further work on a charter amendment that would require a vote of the public to approve any bond issuance by the school district. Um, that's the motion. Second? Second. I'd like to make a statement. Yes. Um, I was on the school board for an awful long time. You had to be crazy to do that. At any rate, uh, I saw numerous occasions when uh, bond rates changed, and uh, if we weren't able to be nimble and quick, I used to look, dislike the word nimble, but it's a good word to use in this situation, to be nimble and quick and take advantage of something. Uh, again, I would point to hundreds of thousands of dollars, even millions, on uh, uh, taking advantage of lower rates, just as people do with their home mortgages. Uh, this district has been able to do it with their bond bonding, and I can't say enough about having that potential. May I make a comment? I think that uh, m my final year on the school board, and Jim, you'll back me up on this, I, because this was um, something that our business administrator had the power to do, and our board had the power to do, he was able to find and save about 10, was it $10 million in, in over the course of a, uh, because of a bond rate change that he could act on right away. His people were telling him this is the time to move. He did it and that was the result. So uh, proof right there that this is a, a very worthwhile. And another thing too, uh, with that kind of uh, um, power, that a financial director has, it's a very, this becomes a very attractive job because the person says, I'm not going to be shackled by all kinds of things. I will be able to use my judgment along with that of the board. And so I think what it does is it ra a high tide brings up a lot of boats. And a lot of boats would be that we would continue to attract good financial people to the district, which is key. And I mean, I think, Betty, too, that it, it, that's a combination. The business manager works with the school board on all of those things. And just another example to Tom's was the timing of the school consolidation project that right. built the new elementary school, very much dependent upon the ability to get access to federal funding at the right time. I, I would just well, uh, quickly tell a story. Uh, in my professional life, I was at uh, Moody's and S&P for a client, which was another city. In the, in the state, and they, it was a complicated deal. They had the room full of their staff people, and the entire head of municipal finance for Moody's was there and said, Ardinger, are you related to an Ardinger with the Concord <laughs> School District? It was my wife, who was at that time, said that that was the absolute best municipal finance deal in the entire uh, period from the recession this the timing was perfect <laughs> and so i strongly this is another piece of evidence as tom said that things are working well with our representative government uh being the school board and its exceptional professional staff and and so that's a it's a it actually came home right to roost uh, <laughs> oh <laughs> so okay so no clint no Tom? No. I vote no. Betty? No. Nancy? No. Tracy? No. Kate? No. Eric? No. Number five, motion to recommend further work on a charter amendment that would establish rules in the charter relating to labor or employment negotiations between the city and or school district and various unions. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Uh, my discussion would be that uh, there are labor union laws that govern this kind of activity, and uh, nothing in the charter uh, 
would be a problem, and I think it was somewhat misunderstood somewhere in the, the neighborhood of uh, to with whom um, CEA employees should be negotiating. Uh, the law is very clear. It's with your employer. I can't imagine how this would work. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're ready for a vote. Yeah. Bill? No. Clint? No. Tom? No. I vote no. Betty? No. Nancy? No. Tracy? No. Kate? No. Eric? No. Number six, motion to recommend further work on a charter amendment that would establish rules in the charter relating to actions by the school district to sell real estate. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? I worry about this one because there's a certain amount of uh, uh, privacy, other people would call it secrecy, uh, in uh, buying and selling real estate. But I can remember clearly uh, being on the board when we, uh, when we, the board, uh, uh, bought some property down in the Rumford Street area at the time uh, before the elementaries were done. Now, if this news had gotten out and gotten all over the place, those kinds of uh, negotiations would be clearly impacted. And I'm not exactly sure what it says here that where this idea came from, but quite frankly, um, I'm not sure I want to discuss it <laughs> when the vote comes. No, I think this is in the nature of trying to use a charter document, which is like a constitution, to build in rules of operation. It's, That's right. in my view, not appropriate. Right. Any, is, any other discussion? No. Let's call it. Bill? No. Clint? No. Tom? No. I vote no. Betty? No. Nancy? No. Tracy? No. Kate? No. Eric? No. Um, motion to recommend, number seven, motion to recommend further work on the <coughs> amendment that would establish rules in the charter relating to the establishment of tax increment financing district. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion or to the vote? Mm, I guess I have a little discussion. I talked with this a, a, a bit with a uh, finance director and uh, it used to be called the Joint City School Committee, well it's called something else now, but, but it still does the same thing. Um, I understand TIF and I understand how it works and I understand that some people are concerned about it, but I'm not sure that the charter is the place to take care of it. Uh, I also would dislike uh, making a situation where the city and the school uh, were odds over things. They have to work really hard with uh, uh, recreational facilities and in other areas uh, to combine and to cooperate and to uh, make each sector better. So I have a certain reluctance to uh, shake that tree. Bill, I have something to say. Yes, sir. Uh, I think that uh, uh, I agree with Betty in some ways, but I think that uh, this TIF thing has gone without much input, so far, zero input from the school district. And I think it's at least looking uh, worth looking at again. Understood. I'm not sure I understand the issue. Right. I mean, I, I, I don't purport to understand TIF. Okay. Well, then maybe but we should talk about it. But I guess, yeah, but I guess I'm, I'm also thinking that I don't understand what the interest is in having school districts. It depends on who you talk to. If there are some people that believe that the tax increment financing as a method that the city uses to advance development is used in ways that the uh, taxes raised on the development things go only into city operations and these people feel like the school has been bypassed. Uh, and so that's, that's one view. Uh, also, uh, some of the TIF arrangements have been extended, and that causes a certain amount of alarm. I think I'm talking myself into saying maybe we should look at it. Is it but if the <coughs> city enters into a TIF district, can the funds from that district be used for school board purposes? Is it, dep that? it depends on the, on the, the, the rule for this. Remember, what we're talking about here is the charter. 
the TIF issue is Man. a very complicated issue that involves the city council, discussions with economic development. Writing a rule into your constitution about the TIF financing issue, as I remember the testimony from the, from the resident who brought this up, it was really about a frustration with the way the city process is going on. The school district, school board has never dealt with TIF issues. So, you know, I think in this case, I, I definitely, you know, am not inclined to devote further priority of our shortened time on, on trying to evaluate whether the school district charter should have something in it on tax and for increment I think finance. Your point about the charter is the right one. Mm -hmm. Well, sorry, Bill, I disagree, and I think it's worth, I, I don't think we can do much with it, but it's sure worth talking about. Yeah. Bill? I would vote no on this one. Clint? Yes. Tom? No. I vote no. Betty? I want to vote no. Nancy? No. Tracy? No. Kate? No. Eric? I... I, I I can't make up my mind. I don't have enough information on it. You want to just abstain? I want to abstain, yeah. Okay. Motion fails. Bill? Let's move on and remember that, that what Betty said at the beginning. Any yep. straw vote in, of interest we take tonight can be revisited. It's not really final. It's about conversation. And I, I think, in fact, the further information on it would be useful. So yes. Motion eight, motion to recommend further work on a charter amendment that would establish rules in the charter relating to requests for proposals, RFPs, for significant school district projects. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? I, I just have a quick question. Um, my understanding is that RFP, there's a state law that re is there is there not? I, I'm not an expert numbers, on this, I, but there is definitely, there are requirements about municipal, you know, governmental okay. uh, offerings and, and, and stuff like that, and those rules do apply to municipal entities like school districts. So there's already rules regarding yeah. this. Um, again, having served on the board for a while, I've seen the request for proposals go out, but I've also seen a process called certifying people who, uh, people, uh, companies that are uh, putting in a proposal. Uh, I'm satisfied that this is an operational thing and that it should be done as an operational thing and I'm not sure why we would want to put something in right. the charter about it. Linda. Oh, I'm sorry, Linda. Um, there is a school board policy that covers our uh, policy. Oh, yes. Policy, yes. Yeah, on is there, bidding. Is there okay. a definition yes. of significant within that, Linda? I, I mean, I, I, have I don't to say, have it at my fingertips. I can look it up. Any buckets. school boards that entered into a major project without having a request for proposals would be crazy. Yeah, yeah you, you gave Certainly, you, this school board is not. I don't think I brought it with me tonight, but you supplied it. I lost my mind. Uh, Bill? Uh, no. Clint? No. Tom? No. I vote no. Betty? No. Nancy? No. Tracy? No. Kate? No. Eric? No. That covers the fiscal autonomy uh, or, or authority motions. Now we get to the issue of the mix of the, the school board uh, voting and, and composition. Number nine, motion to recommend further work on a charter amendment to increase or otherwise alter the number of school board members? Second. Any discussion? I've been very um, helped by the um, presence of our two school board members tonight too. I'll admit, having been on the school board only a short time, but I was, I wondered how board members would feel about this. So it was, thank you both for coming. I know you're only representing yourselves, but um, one is a long time member and the other one is shorter and it, that was helpful to me, so thanks. 
Uh, the thing that I would know is that there are a number of motions right in this section that are all intertwined. Yes. And, and to be perfectly honest, if if one votes to uh, not even discuss a change, then that closes all discussion on, on the, all the others. On the others. That's right. And so whether we would agree or not personally at this point, because it uh, has an effect or a cause or, or both a cause and effect with others, I, I believe that we are duty bound to keep that an open question. Betty, I don't think I, I don't disagree that some of these are interconnected. I don't think this one is. Yeah, I don't I think, think that's wrong. Um, many of the this others. This is the now, number on I'm, the board. I'm happy to continue this one, but um, my personal view of it is I don't I haven't had anybody mm -mm. provide a substantive basis why for why we would consider this, except that the school board members have worked too hard, and one sure way to ensure that people or to address this issue is people won't run for the board if they feel that they're work that, that they're overworked and you know it's I, I, I don't know I, I just feel like this is one we don't need to take on but I, the, I'm, I'm probably going to vote um, to consider a bunch of the others but I'm not, I'm not sure that I need this one so it in in the vein of being overworked by committee in my nine years experience on the board, there has always been negotiation prior to um, a, appointment to committees with the chair to determine, is this an interest of yours? Is this something that you'd like to do? Is this something you can do? Uh, so there's that factor that comes in there. No one's gonna walk in and be assigned, you know, all the heavy hitter committees um, at, at least in my experience, that has not happened. It's both by by choice and by need, um, but it, it's pretty evenly pushed out there. Mm -hmm. So I don't see. I, I, I would vote no on this. <coughs> Bill. Uh, no. What? No. 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 I vote no. Betty. Yes. Nancy. No. Tracy. Yes. Kate? No. Eric? No. Well, um, the vote is seven to two. Um, I think let's see what the other, what, you know, it may well come up in some of the other discussions. Uh, I would suggest that we may find in addressing others that we would have to settle this. So we may come back to it uh, being led by our noses. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm, I'm happy with this result. Let me try number 10, which is a precise part uh, a facet of this. Motion to recommend further work on a charter amendment that would require all candidates for school board to run in a single at-large district and to eliminate the current ward districts. Is there a second? If, if I would just start the discussion, I'd say, um, you know, I was one of those 10 years ago who uh, I liked the at-large district structure for the reason that everyone was being elected to represent the entire district. I think I have not heard, except in very few circumstances, people complain about moving to having a district component. And so I, I uh, at the risk of getting into trouble with a number of people, I, I would say I'm inclined to vote no on devoting additional work to this particular aspect. I, like Bill, I think there are a couple others here that I would vote yes on to explore. But this one, going back entirely, the voters also, 10 years ago, approved this uh, right. including this mix of at large by a gigantic margin over 85 percent I'm gonna I'd like to make a comment too um, you know I, I, I truly believe that every school board member does once they're on the board absolutely represent everyone in the district however I think that there are some perspectives when you live in a certain area like when you live out 
where I do, you realize, you know, those of you who live in town may not realize how icy the roads get and that you can bring a perspective by living out in a different part of town that maybe it's difficult for the school buses. My daughter's bus got off the road the other day. You know, things like that that may not be apparent to those who live downtown. So I think having that perspective is helpful and knowing that someone in your neighborhood, like I typically when I've wanted to address the school board members, I've emailed Tom because he's in, and, and Jim too in the past because they're sort of, you know, there's a connection. His kids went to my school. I knew his wife from SAP. And I think that that is very beneficial to making people feel comfortable to approach school board members. Mm -hmm. That's also a comment. Um, mostly echoing what you say, Bill, is 10 years ago, I wrote a letter to the editor. I thought this was a horrible idea, the wards. Um, I've come around the, it's a double-edged sword. Um, it is easier to win when you can do it by district. It's double edged sword going back to what Charlie said is I think having it in wards makes it easier to get the other voices in as well. Um, but I've come around that it not so much the representation because I think everybody that takes on the job does it for the entire district more than anything. But it is nice that you can you get people to run and can't afford to run in a smaller area mm -hmm. and get the participation. So I'm a convert <laughs> over the last decade on that. So hey, Bill. Yes, Clint, go ahead. Um, I, this was a proposal <coughs> that actually I proposed at the last convention. And I would like to say that if I had an opinion on it, I'd say that I, if I were going to change it all on my own, I would go with three or six at-large people and three at wards. But that's just because I think uh, you, you draw more candidates that way. But I have nothing really totally vested in it, and I'll vote yes to keep this uh, discussion going. And, and, and on that, Clint, the next motion is actually that exact proposal that you just described. Of, yeah. uh, and so uh, the, the one we're on right now is to do further work to change, eliminate all ward uh, voting. Oh, and so I'm voting no on that one. Thanks, Bill. It. No. <laughs> it's kind of complicated. It is complicated. Right? So let me yeah, add I told you. Thanks for the score sheet. Add to, add to the comments. Um, Ten years ago, I was vehemently opposed to this ward system. Um, for two reasons, really. One was, and I think some of it is a vestige of the past, that people in this town were wedded to the local schools. Um, at one of the proudest things I, I feel I did when I was on the school board is the school consolidation project, which, um, you know, I think I haven't heard anybody say, boy, I, I wish I had the Dame School back, or, you know, I, I wish I had. Um, uh, the Rumford School back, um, but so and I, I felt that, but you know things have changed in the town since the 1980s. Um, when I was running for the school board in the 1980s, sure it was hard to get elected citywide, but what you really needed to do was to lobby people in your own districts and in the areas around where you live because the wards around where you live because those are the people who probably knew you best and you'd get you'd run up the votes in those areas which is not a, not unlike the ward system um, another concern i had was that the, the the quality of people who want to run for the school board isn't necessarily divided equally among the wards in the town you might well have a situation and I think this was true when I was on the board in the in from 2005 on was we had more members on the board from I think from the east side of the city than we did from the west side. Um, so uh, I, I felt that you'd be limiting yourself a little bit in terms of who could run, and if you had three seats in a ward and three highly two seats and three highly qualified people wanted to run. You're limiting that ability simply by where they live. Um, 
I, I get Tracy's point that there's some value in knowing your school board member a little bit um, more, but Tracy knew Tom and Jim from for reasons other than the fact I assume that they live nearby. But um, I'm a bit of an agnostic on this one right now. I, I, um, I must say, I think that the thing that is convincing me more it, is it's just hard to get people to run for these positions at all. And so um, if it makes it easier for someone to run because they can they can campaign, if you will. I never campaigned much for the school board because I've never felt like, you know, if I want to do it as a volunteer, fine. If people don't want to elect me, that's fine too, right? Um, but um, I get that. And the notion that we are now talking about what it costs to run for the school board in Concord is kind of an alien concept to me. I never put any money into my races. The only money I ever put in was, you know, whatever money it cost to buy signs. And I remember that probably one of the happier moments when I was running for the school board was Bob Reno gave me 25 bucks one time. And I thought, if Bob Reno will give me money, what could be better? <laughs> you know? um, so I, I'm not sure I want to vote not to consider this at all. Um, I, I get the point, and I think probably it's pretty clear that we're not going to come out this way. What I really had hoped, it hasn't, it hasn't come to pass, is that a lot of people in town would come out and talk with us about this. And frankly, the fact that they haven't is the best indication that, this, that the new system is probably working right. pretty well. Right. So I may vote. I think I'm going to vote to keep it on the table, but I suspect it's not going to go very far. You know, I, at the at the risk of having this these uh, Betty's point that 10, 11, and 12 are all about the mix. Yeah. That clearly is of interest to all of us <coughs> in one of these. Could I amend my motion to say that on 10, 11, and 12, the mix that we, that this commission do further work and really focus our attention on the mix question. I think everyone has expressed their views on, on the benefit of ward voting and Tracy, your exp your, it was just very, very clear to me. Uh, mechanically, great comments. Why ward voting brings something to the table. But my amendment would be that we vote to keep 10, 11, 12 on the table for further work as we discuss the mix. Is there a second for that Good amendment? Good idea. I'll second. Um, I second it. <laughs> I ran five times for Concord School Board and all on the at-large basis. And I felt more heat running at-large than I think I would have felt running from a ward. Because at-large, one time we had nine or 10 candidates lined up across the old Kimball School Auditorium. And I'm looking at every one of them and thinking, you're good, you're good, you're good, you're good, you're good. I'm, I'm dead. Uh, and so, at large is not as easy as people think and uh, I think there's some merit to it however I do agree fully the 10 11 and 12 that again they're so intermixed uh, it's kind of silly to take these separately gotcha. because it's all going to come up at the same place so I will vote uh, to uh, say yes to further study 10 11 and 12 together Ready for the vote? So we're vo so we're voting essentially on all three motions on all three of these topics. Of to continue work. Yeah. Okay. Bill. Uh, yes. Clint. Yes. Tom. Yes. I vote yes. I vote yes. 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 I was all set to vote no, but yeah. We can <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, on to motion 13, which is about the number of, about the years for elections. Motion to recommend further work on a charter amendment to alter the years for elections of school board member, uh, e.g., for example, from the current system of every year to one where school boards are held, for example, only on non-national election days. Um, this has come up, this particular idea came up and 
in testimony from one of our, our, our contributors. And so we put this motion on for a review of the board. I'll I'll second. Uh, it's second. So I'm going to vote against this. I'm not sure how it will work. We've got, we've got nine members of the board that run in cycles of three. Mm -hmm. So how you would squeeze a two-year term into that. I would say, however, virtually every time I ran for the school board in a national election, I lost. <laughs> so uh, I forgot how many times I ran and won versus lost. It's more fun to win than lose. But, but I look at it this way. Uh, there's some years when the uh, participation is strong and there's other years when it's light and then it goes uh, in mm -hmm. cycles. Mm -hmm. And so take the thick and the thin and, uh, you know, if you're a candidate and you want to time your candidacy, well, go ahead, you have that right. But let's leave it open for our, every year. It, w it would also, I always hoped that the reason I lost in those years is because a lot of people were voting for the school board and had no idea what they were voting for. Right. On the other hand, I'd hate to see a rule in which you said, the more people who come out to vote, that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so. uh, Bill? Uh, no, uh, no on this one. From Clint? No. Tom? No. I vote no. Betty? No. 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 Tracy? Okay. No. Eric? No. Number 14. This is another issue that was raised during testimony. Motion to recommend further work on a charter amendment that would clarify that school board candidates or members from ward districts must always be residents of the ward. So the, the concept I think was that you could have someone who wasn't a resident of District A running for District A. <laughs> And, and there is, yeah, I looked at this just to, is there a second? Uh, is there a second on it? Yeah. I, I looked at this a little. There is a little language uh, question in the charter that there might be some correction, but really the way it probably is certainly intended and how it's been applied in the past is that you got to be a resident yeah. of the district you're running from. Uh, so go ahead, Linda. I I suspect too that the question, because it's come up before, is if you move from either the ward or your district, that you should resign that seat. Yeah. So that may be part of this question as well. I, I believe it is. I, I think it is, but to go back to Gina's point earlier. Uh, it happened you're, with you're Gina. Running, you're running for three year terms. Yes. So if you get elected from a particular ward, and if truly, school board representatives, once they get elected, represent right. the city, then I think we keep this on the table for purposes of that. But also, I mean, if you move out of the city, that's one thing. Yeah. Right? And that's always been the rule, that if you move out of the city, the school board has the right to usually appoint the person who had the highest number of votes that didn't get, who didn't get elected. But um, I'd at least like the option to consider to weigh in on this question of if you move from Ward four to Ward five, or even from Ward five across the river, that you don't necessarily need to resign from the school no. board. No, still live in Concord. Bill, I would vote yes. Keep this on the table. Clint, yes. Tom, yes. I vote yes. Betty, yes. Nancy, yes. Tracy, yes. Kate, yes. Eric, yes. Motion 15, we're almost there. Motion to recommend <laughs> further work on a charter amendment to increase or otherwise alter the stipend, <clears throat> the money, the financial payment for school board members. Is there a second? Yes. Yes. Any discussion? I, I would like to just make a comment. I think, to, you know, to Gina's point earlier, all school board members are volunteers, but if you're a single parent and you really want to participate in the school board, and you're, the school board's meeting 10 to 15 hours a month and you're paying $10 an hour for babysitting, it's gonna cost you money to volunteer. And I think that we need to consider the fact that not everybody can spend money to volunteer and perhaps it's something to consider that the board should have the ability to look at the stipends in those cases so that we can increase the number of you know, single parents and the diversity of the school board and get it, making it more accessible to people. 
I like it. I like the idea that that amount of money is 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 sort of a sign of respect and thank you for what you do, but not as pay for what you do because it's obvious it can't be done. I, so I I would keep it at least that. I, I'd like to keep it on the table and I'd like to be able to do some further study about what other districts in the state are doing. Um, I started to do that when this first happened, but believe me, it's not as easy and open to find out this sort of information <laughs> as you might think. Um, so I, someone may be a better wizard than me that can do it, um, or maybe there's an organization that has it all put together already, but um, I think it's worth keeping it on the table at least for that. So I would vote yes. I'm, I'm happy to keep it on the table. I think the optics of eight former members of the yep. school board voting to increase the salary. That's exactly what I was members. <laughs> thinking. I'm not quite sure how, especially in this climate that we're in, um, even though I may feel like it's the right thing to do, I just don't know. Um, I mean, perhaps we can look at a compensation for child care or something, a stipend in there, so you're not increasing everyone's salaries, but you're making it accessible to those who may. Yeah. I don't know. I, I just, um, I feel like we're leaving people out that, yeah. to volunteer. I think we're point. we are potentially. I think yeah. you're right and about I, that. Optically, it would be a whole lot worse if you were eight current school board members. Yeah, that's right. I think the fact that you're former is a little bit different. Yeah. And, you know, you've had the experience to know. However, from an equity point of view, and a father of two sons who are equal partners in managing their children, mm -hmm. I want to be sure we don't pitch this as just for young no. mothers. Well, even yeah. single fathers, single, single parents. Single parents. Yeah. Yeah. You know, or, or not even single parents. Even single. I mean, if you were married yeah. to a firefighter who might work right. nights, or somebody who works at the hospital right. who's it's, not home. Yeah, right. I mean, I, I, I have a babysitter yeah. right now to be here, and so I'm not I, a single I, parent. I so, voting, you know, I, I would vote to. Keep it on the table is what we're talking about, yeah. Uh, I would vote yes, keep it on the table. Yes. Tom? Yes. I vote yes. Betty? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Tracy? Yes. Kate? Yes. Eric? Yes. Number 16, motion to recommend further work on a charter amendment to require that candidates for election to the school board, not the charter commission, but to the school board, <laughs> file financial disclosures with the district clerk uh, uh, similar to those that are required for candidates for the Charter Commission. Is there a second? Second. Yes. Any discussion? I'm in favor of this. Absolutely. Yeah. I was I can't. surprised it wasn't already required. Yeah. I mean, and the fact that the Charter Commission had to yeah. file financial disclosures is a little, it's amusing to me. The, the notion that it was going to pay me to run for this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's yeah. okay. call Bill? the vote. Yes. Clint? Yes. Yes. Um, I vote yes. Betty? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Tracy? Yes. Kate? Yes. Eric? Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're going to wake up in the middle of the night going, Tracy, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number 17, motion to recommend further work on a charter amendment to delete provisions of the current charter that are no longer operative because the dates for such provisions have passed. Is there a second? Second. I, I uh, have identified these provisions. Oh. It's from the original uh, 2000, the 10 charter we did, and it refers to the election and mm -hmm. stuff. And I think I tend to vote yes for further work on yeah. that. Thank you. My question was going to be who's done it or who's going to do it. <coughs> Thank you. As worded, Bill, it's hard to vote against. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> kind of tricky. <laughs> and look kind of silly. Nope. Yes. Clint? Yes. Tom? Yes. I yes. vote yes. Betty? Yes. Yes. Nancy? Yes. Tracy? Yes. Eric? Yes. <laughs> Number 18. Motion to recommend further work on a charter amendment to mandate a future charter commission on a specific future date, such as 10 years hence. Is there a second? Yes. I second it. Any discussion? This is a good issue that has been discussed. I, I, I just feel that we can't predict the future that well. We can't predict it tomorrow sometimes. And so 10 years from now, it, someone may be 
champing at the bit saying oh my god get this 10 years over so we can get this <laughs> on the table and um, you know it, it may not happen either but I think it's better to have it than not have it well I think also that um, Charlie's point wasn't a bad one which is that the process <coughs> can be pretty difficult to get the signatures together to have the Charter Commission and I'm I'm not a fan of amending constitutions on a regular basis or certainly having constitutional conventions, but um, and there's an awful lot of mischief that can happen in those. Yeah. So, but we're, ta we're not talking now about whether we'll do it. We're talking about whether we consider it. So Further work. So right. I, right. No right. Yeah. On this one, I just want to let you, on this one, I uh, hear Tom's point, and I hope that further work is done, but just for the record on this one, I I don't I oppose the the last time <coughs> setting a fixed date because there is a process in here and we thought a lot about it so even Tom <coughs> I, I want to work I'll be happy to work on it but I I would vote no on this one but I'm mm -hmm. happy to be in the minority it, it shouldn't be easy to, to no. uh, create a charter commission right okay Bill. so <laughs> I, I'm sorry I just need to work. <coughs> So are you saying that it, because of the fixed date component, that you're not in favor of this, or in the fact that you, you don't see a need for it in the future? I don't see a, a, a need for the charter itself to specify automatically a mandatory charter commission 10 years hence. I am very happy with the current charter, which would allow, actually, if something blew up next year, you could create another charter commission on the heels of this. If the voters really feel, or the school board, there's procedures in here that the school board could call a charter commission. I'm very comfortable with those provisions. I, I, I think this one, the 10-year one, was set because, as Clint and Betty will remember, we were going through a process of building a consensus there to get a very big issue in front of the voters. And, and this was put in to take a look at it 10 years hence. Nothing much has happened mm -hmm. on the charter. And at this point, I, I, you know, my intent is, that, is not to have a mandatory charter obligation, but rather leave it to the provisions of the discretion of the school board and the voters through petitioning to call another charter rather than have one automatically get on the election. Because what if it's not necessary in 10 years? Suppose that in 1845, the United States Constitution provided that there would be a 10-year constitutional convention. Right. And that had occurred in 1855. And it just, it, it creates an artificial, and frankly, the fact that we've had so little interest mm in this commission and in any amendments to this charter is some demonstration of the fact that you don't need it every 10 years. If there's some hot issue that people want brought up, they can do it. But we're talking But let's not debate it further because right. I think we just don't. On this one, for the reasons I've said, I would say no. Clint? Um, I, I think that in some ways I agree with Bill, but uh, I think this is a uh, something we should continue discussing. So I vote yes. Tom? Uh, I'm going to vote yes. Uh, I'm going to vote no. Betty? Yes. Nancy? No. Tracy? Yes. Kate? Yes. Eric? Yes. And I think it should be in this, in the, in the charter to revisit it. I mean, just look at the stuff that we're being forced to look at now that has sat there for 10 years with provisions in place to look at it, but it hasn't been touched for 10 years, and we're being forced to do so now. For that reason, I think it should be, yeah, take a look at it. It may just be one meeting, and it's like, yep, this looks perfect 10 years from now. Let's break for beer, but it should be looked at. So I'm a yes. I don't think we all go for beer when this is <laughs> <laughs> This motion list. Very good. Uh, motion 19. Motion to recommend further work on a charter amendment to prohibit the school board from changing elementary school boundary lines. 
this was my attempt to to translate what I thought I heard from the testimony into an issue for us to talk about. Is it? And I would just say, is there a second? Yes. Yeah. That that on this, the I really think that this is a real complicated legal question. I don't believe that you can change the boundary. The Concord School District can change its boundary lines. I think that requires an action of the legislature because we are a school administrator. Well, this district. isn't the boundary line. This is the individual school, school elementary oh, schools. Elementary school ball. Yeah. Which gotcha, I mean, gotcha. I think we have to consider that the demographics are going to change over time and populations are going to change and we have to even things out with the buildings that we have. You can't have try and smush twice as many kids into Beaver Meadow. I, I got you. Yeah, absolutely. I, mean, I, you're absolutely. I think this was misunderstood, and Jim, I believe you're the one who brought it up. I didn't, I didn't really bring this one up, no. Well, you mentioned it, and some well, I, I mentioned, I think it came up in that meeting, um, and if I'm going to talk, I should do it into a microphone. No, thank you. Um, no, I, as I read this, and, and I don't, if I did bring it up, I brought it up inadvertently <laughs> with the discussion or anything else. But I believe that Tracy is the way I interpret it too. Is it's not the Concord School District yeah. boundary lines. It would end. Yeah, it would be the elementary school area boundary lines, which I believe changed when we consolidated yes. the schools, and I think that's kind of what came up. But I, I, I really don't have a lot to say because. Tracy said it exactly right. Yeah. We would have to be building additional schools while other schools would be half full. Yeah. And so I, if you want my personal opinion, I think this is an extremely difficult thing to work. I understand why, because people buy property in a school uh, that, that the elementary school that they care about. But you know, as, as the school board president, my goal is to make every elementary school outstanding and equal and that it doesn't matter which elementary school you're going to. If you're in the Concord School District, you're getting a great education. Thank you. Excellent. And then this issue probably was miswritten by me, not misstated by anyone else. So um, it, it's probably it's, for the reason it's, it's a classic example, Bill, of what you said earlier, constraining the Concord School District in its operational function. No, no, no. The charter is no, 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 no. Right. So exactly. I guess that means I vote against it. <laughs> Bill? I would vote no. Clint? Absolutely not. <laughs> Tom? No. 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 It's me. Yeah. <laughs> Number 20. Motion to recommend further work on changing any of the current provisions relating to the requirements for petitions urging charter amendments or revisions. Is there a second? Second. I, I'd vote yes on this because for the reasons that Charlie Russell suggested, maybe it's, when I read these, I had a hard time figuring out the difference between the ways in which different petitions can be brought forward. Um, and just maybe we could just clarify it, is what I'm thinking. So I agree with you as a non-lawyer who read it. I had no idea, like a regular citizen. I was like, okay, well, hopefully there's a way if someone ever needed to change this, someone smarter than me could figure it out. I, I agree. Mm -hmm. was it, when I chose to run for this commission, it was the single most confusing piece of, of any part of this, was trying to figure out why am I reading this when there's so much else that could be read and talked about. It was funny, on this point, I was talking to, as Bill mentioned, uh, an attorney to see if the person would be interested in potentially representing our charter commission. And what he said is, you know, I read through the charter that was put together 10 years ago and it basically takes verbatim what is in statute. And that's, in fact, what we did. Uh, the statute is a mess. But, uh, but I think further work wouldn't hurt anybody on this, so. Okay, Bill? Uh, yes. Clint? Yes. Tom? Yes. I vote yes. Betty? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Tracy? Yep. Okay. Yes. Eric? Yep. Number 21, mo almost done, motion to recommend further work on allowing greater discretion to the school board with respect to scheduling regular meetings. 
Is there a second? Second. The, this came up uh, as someone was focusing on the fact that the meetings, uh, if regular meetings shall be held on the first Monday of each month in the current charter, provided that if the Monday is a legal holiday like we just had, the meeting shall be held on the first Tuesday of that month. So it's kind of a constrained scheduling provision and that's what this motion is focused on. May I interject something? Yeah. Didn't you tell me, Lyndon, that they've never left for a quorum on a Tuesday that was held after a Monday conflict with a holiday? That's correct in my time here and there's never been a complaint from a board member that the meeting was on the Tuesday following the Monday which was a holiday. It, I should say no. In my time, it just feels to me like when when I sat on the school board, I could hardly ever distinguish the difference between a regular <laughs> meeting and a meeting. So I, I don't know that there's any reason to change this. Gotcha. Want to, any further discussion? Bill. So Bill. No. Clint. For sure, no. <laughs> Tom. No. I vote no. Betty? No. Nancy? No. Tracy? No. Kate? No. Eric? No. Final one. Motion to recommend further work on a charter amendment that would facilitate the combination of the Concord and Penacook school systems. Is there a second? Second. This is again, was trying to gather issues that came up. I don't know how the charter deals with this. This is a much bigger yeah, how do you how does a charter for the Concord School District tell the Pennacook and Merrimack Valley School District how that they have to dissolve and I, I I mean this was a question that Tom and I were asked at the right. debate and it seemed wildly crazy then and I haven't changed my mind on Still that. Does, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you do it. I don't either. Boy. Well, it seems very assuming that one school district could just absorb another for fun. Right. Yeah. And Certainly not through your charter. Right. Yeah. And I'm going to go back to, to both Bill's comments earlier on other motions that we're kind of putting our charter commission nose into the school board business. I think if, if the superintendent of schools and the board president were to confer and find out that this may be something we should look at, that we would be them and not us. That's right. Ready for mm -hmm. vote? Mm -hmm. I would start by voting no. Okay. No. Tom? No. 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 Okay, let me see if I can no. summarize. Summar <laughs> let me see if I can summarize this for you. Yeah. Um, just for the record. Um, <coughs> Thanks work, Betty. 11 minutes early. No, no, I'm hurrying. You did it. No, it's not done business. yet. A little bit of business. Oh, there is? Yeah, yeah just a cut. Yeah, Clint, we're holding just, we're going to get a little report on a quick summary here and then a couple other items. That will oh, go. All right, okay, never mind. They'll go fast. <laughs> They'll go fast. Um, okay. Okay. You want to take that? Yeah, I think, um, yeah. We don't have to. Okay. We'll come back on that. Uh, do, we don't Let have me, I can, Bill, while you're summarizing, on the agenda, mm -hmm. uh, Betty has just leaned over. Okay, this is continued discussion of engaging required commission counsel. I think that you and Kate and I will come back to the next meeting with an actual recommendation mm -hmm. and we'll collect some information like proposed rates and stuff like that for you. So I think that covers that issue. Well, we thank you for the work you've done and the work that you will be presenting presently. So, Betty, if I could just summarize, Good. And I think people, if it does keep the score at home. Um, and Bill, if you, for this one, we are a little bit closer. I think to we've again. agreed to continue discussions on items 1, 2, mm -hmm. 10, 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, mm -hmm. 17, and 18. And 20. And 20. And 20. And 20. And 
3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 13, 19, 21, and 22. Well done. <coughs> well, I personally want to thank every single person for taking part in this. I really was eager for us to uh, get this on the record and go through the exercise. And uh, I think we did it in a fair and efficient manner and that it'll pay fruits, uh, which you'll see in just a moment. Right at the moment, uh, this is the housekeeping. Uh, you have uh, copies of uh, the uh, draft December meeting minutes. Are there any corrections, errors, or omissions that anyone wants to bring up? Uh, I move that we, we approve the minutes. Second. There's a second. Bill, is that okay with you? Okay. Uh, it's been moved and seconded that we approve those minutes. And uh, uh, all those in favor will say aye, please. Aye. Oh, we actually, we for this board. meeting, we got to do a roll call. <laughs> Sorry. So we, because oh, of a roll call. Oh, 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 all right. Roll call. Uh, Ardinger, yes. <laughs> Doesn't he go next? He can do it. Yes. Uh, Clint. Clint. Yes. 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 Everybody, thank you very much. All right. Uh, the next thing is, um, I'm a little bit concerned about the number of meetings that we have scheduled. We're only out to uh, February 1 and 22nd. We also have a school vacation, so this site is not available. Uh, if you, uh, before, there were 10 meetings between when we started in November and when we uh, more or less closed up shop in April, and there were a couple of little diddly ones afterwards. But we're at meeting number four right now. So uh, if you don't have your phone calendar with you, I can tell you the dates. They're all on Tuesday. Uh, Lyndon very carefully engaged every Tuesday for us. So it would be only, am I right? The room is reserved for you. Uh, why don't I let you do this? <laughs> no, seriously. Oh. I don't have that. I don't have a bigger calendar. Well, uh, me, but well, I have the dates. I can. Okay. Uh, in February, the Tuesdays are the first, the eighth, the fifteenth, and the twenty-second. We're already scheduled for the first and the twenty-second. Mm -hmm. Now, when we get to March, there are five Tuesdays, but I don't know if March one conflicts with the holiday week. I believe it does. It does. Uh, the room is still available uh, if you can get Conquer TV to record this. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure whether your recorder, Don, or I would be available. Okay, well. But should we do more in February, Betty? Well, uh, we, we could put one in on the 8th. Mm -hmm. Or the 15th. I wouldn't recommend both. Right. I, I'm wondering. That would give us three in February, and we'd be up to seven by then. But we need to save time for a public hearing <clears throat> before the uh, preliminary report goes in. So that means we will have to meet in April to have the hearing, and probably a meeting before to prepare the hearing. So we're looking at a couple in April to get that necessary um, mini end of, of the situation. So uh, it would look like we probably should either add one in uh, February and have at least two in March and two in April. Well, that's five and four is nine. Well, if nine comes close to ten. Uh, what is anybody else's comment on this? I, I just think it would be helpful if we knew what our time things and quite frankly it will be easier to cancel a meeting mm -hmm. that we um, uh, originally agreed to but if we find we don't need it you know obviously it wouldn't be held i, I think under that scenario betty schedule meetings for every tuesday in February to see what happens I mean, every tuesday yeah i mean it's um it's only two more yeah, I, I, and, and here's here's the point We've narrowed this this universe down substantially. I I would recommend, for example, that we take up these issues of composition of the board at the next meeting, yeah. on the first, 
and that we, the monitor can make that very clear. That that's probably the most controversial issue right. we be, have on our plate. Yeah. And um, if we get that resolved, then I think we probably uh -huh. we probably only need a couple oh, more meetings. Hold on, uh, Clint, are you there? Clint. He may have left. You may have thought we were done. That's all right. Go ahead. So okay. all my point is that topic is going to eliminate the most controversial issues. Mm -hmm. And then I think if we had a couple of more meetings, we could get this done. Um, right. And what we really want is pick a date on that meeting that works for the most number of people. Yep. And get the monitor to write an article that said, hey, this is what we're considering at this meeting. That's going to get the most people out to this meeting. Um, mm -hmm. So. Um, I, I th and then, you know, if we find after that first meeting, well, based on the issues we've got in front of us now, we don't need all these meetings. We can always cancel. Yeah. Uh, I like your idea of picking the tough one first. Yeah. The one that has the most interest and probably the most viewpoints. So are you suggesting to schedule both 8 and 15 yeah. in February? And if we front load ourselves, then we don't find ourselves scrambling at the end. Yeah, right. I agree. Yeah. It's easy for me because I'm going to be in Alabama on February 8th. So, <laughs> but no, but we, we're not going to get everybody at every meeting. No. Right. Okay. Well, let me say this again. We were already scheduled for the 1st and the 22nd. And uh, there seems to be some sentiment for tackling the tough ones first, figure out how we do. And in order to do that, the suggestion has been to meet. February 1, 8, 15, and yep. 22. Is there any disagreement with that? All right, and then uh, we don't have any for March yet. Should we put in a couple, or should we deal with it after we find out how we work with February? I think we reserve the 1st and the 8th in March, and we may find we don't need either of them. Okay. The, the first is school vacation yeah, week, okay. and that's so coming. The 8th and 15th. Yeah. Great. Well, I'm sort of in my own mind holding on to March 8th and March 15th. And then we still have uh, three weeks in April to take care of uh, the preparation of the preliminary and the hearing on it. Okay, I'm sort of breathing a sigh of relief. Is it too soon? No, I think this, who, whoever did the work ahead of time, this was extremely yeah. okay. efficient. And, it and was terrific. What you've already Jeez, done and you. for next yeah. time yeah. is there was, I had uh, down discussion of the next meeting's agenda. We have it. And I will tell you that uh, I'm going to pull executive privilege here and do a presentation first thing because I have historical data that may have influence on those related items about the composition of on the, with the award board and at large and its historical stuff. And uh, some of it breaks down some of the myths that have gone on for years. I won't detail that anymore. I don't want to give away all my surprises. That's right. Right. And so that uh, that is our agenda for next uh, time. I, I think, now, I don't know whether you want to include the stipend in that discussion. Oh, I sure. I think so. what that means is that the, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> glass. Like Donald Trump ripping off the ground. <laughs> um, items 10, 11, and 12 are included within the and um, 14. Which number? 10, 11, 12, and 14. 14. Wow. 14 is um, that will in your award. Okay. Uh, Everybody got that? 10, yeah. 11, 12, and, and 14. Is the 15. stipend issue. I don't know whether you want to include that in Oh, uh, well, we can keep that in abeyance. Okay. Okay. Uh, Wait, did we want to um, say that we could send a group to ask the Attorney General a question? Great. Thank you. That's so good. I was moving on. So that would be, because we've considered moving ahead with further work, that would be uh, a sense, as yeah. Bill said, of how the people feel here about having that delegation go and yeah. check. Any objections about it? Sounds like we have no objection. Right. Thank okay. you. Tracy. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I move to adjourn. I think <laughs> my agenda is all crossed off. And if it didn't, you can strike them off. No, oh, it, it is. It's done. <laughs> I second that motion. All right. Um, we need a roll call. Yeah, uh, roll call for this. Uh, All right, see. Bill. Uh, Ardinger, yes. Clint. Yes. 
Okay. Yes. Crazy. Yes. 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 Yep. Um, Linda, uh, if I could give you this scorecard. Great job, Clint. Yeah. It worked oh, out okay. I'm so happy. You know, Bill, will you yeah, tell everybody thanks for putting up with me? Oh, are you kidding? It's, it's, you, you feel better?